Today, I'm taking a look at the Flare 58. Now this is a manual press that does have a preheat um, element to it. This is actually my own one. I've been brewing with it for quite some time now and it's just blowing my mind about the quality of the espresso you can actually get out of this thing. Uh, the engineering is it's really cool. Um, and this one here uh, is actually been given to us from Flair. Now we're gonna give this away to one of our coffee subscribers. So if that's something that you wanna try and win, jump on our website and you'll find out how we're gonna give that away. So firstly, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this apart and show you all the pieces that come in the kit. Then we'll put it back together. Then we're gonna pull an extraction and just show you what kind of results we can get out of the flare. I think you're gonna be amazed. So let's get this thing pulled apart. So there you go, all the bits out of the packaging, ready to assemble. Now there is a manual, but who needs that? So I'm gonna start putting it together. Um, you've got your base plate here and you've got your main lever mechanism. And you've got to attach these two together really simply by two Allen key bolts. And slide them in from the bottom. Obviously you don't want to thread those, so just take your time to get them lined up. Pop the other one in. And use, you've got two Allen keys supplied, so the big one is used for this base. Get them all the way in. Whoops. Cool. All right, so that's the lever arm and the base connected. Now, the next part that you'd grab is your heating and brew chamber. Now, this one pops in just like a group handle really. There's a couple of um, little notches on either side and the electronic elements are gonna end up over here. And turn it around. I've got that sitting at the back just so it's out of the way. Then you've got a smaller Allen key and you just need to tighten up the grub screw on the front which will hold that brew head in place. It's really important to do that if you don't, um, when you try and lock in your group handle, it's gonna move. Now the next thing that you want to do is find your little uh, locating arm and pin and we're going to use the brewing gauge and assemble this whole area together. Now again there's little keyways here which allow you to lock in the, um, drop it in the slot and just turn it around at a nice right angle so that the hook comes down and locks in place. Then you've got to pop on this other little piece which will join the puzzle together. Like so. And then you pop in your little black pin. There we go, and that's all secure. You've then got your handle, which is nice. They give you a naked handle, um, and you've got like a double size basket there. Um, it, it's a tapered basket, so you're looking around 18 grams of coffee that would go into that one. They give you a flare water puck screen, and these are pretty cool, they're new. We're gonna speak about those in different videos, so it's really nice that you get one of those. Um, you've got a drip tray, which is, is needed for this kind of unit, um, and I'll explain where that, why that's so important in a second. Uh, you get a small tamper, which is kind of nice, it's pretty small, um, and it does fit. It's a 58, so ideally, if you're gonna change that basket, you might wanna get yourself a 58.5 or something like that. And you've got a little lock which holds this arm in place so that it doesn't fall down when you're brewing. So don't lose that one. Then you've got your power pack, which we're gonna assemble. Now, this one here is in a couple of parts. There is another model as well, which is just one solid piece from here to here. So the important thing about this power pack is that you do have to have it fully connected before you turn it on. So don't plug this into power and then connect it. 
it's not ideal for the unit. So make sure you get it all ready, plug it in, and we're gonna to have to turn that on in a second. Now, you'll notice that there are a couple of these other options. They're basically a silicon cover. Um, now, there is a model called a 58X, which is the non-heating element options. And these two pieces allow you to have the, um, the plunger um, attached under it so you could fill it with your own boiling water to get a preheat happening. We all know that thermal stability is the key to making a great espresso. So if you didn't have the electronic option, you would have to um, heat those up, heat the handle up, and make sure it's all really hot before you start to brew. But with this Flare 58 and the um, electric element in here with a three-stage switch, you can dial in the right temperature and it's gonna heat up and help you with that um, retention of heat before you start to brew. So as I mentioned, you wanna preheat everything. Now, um, when, you, when this arm is all the way down, the plunger is sitting um, as if it's come right down into this group handle. So you do need to just raise it a little bit just so that you can pop your handle in. And this is the same when you've got coffee in there. So I'm gonna pop that in and I'm just gonna lower it back down and I'm gonna press and hold the button and it'll beep at us once you've plugged it in. And I've selected option three, which is the highest heat setting. Now when that light goes out, that means that it's hot and ready to go. Okay, so it's just been over three minutes and the three lights are now on and it beeped at us to tell us that it was ready to go. Now we need to lift up our lever. We're going to get our group handle out, which is now warm, which is great. And it does have, um, it's clean and dry. I've got my 20 grams of ground coffee here and I reckon that's gonna be pretty much spot on for this basket. Now, I'm not using any sort of WDT or NCD, which again is gonna change the whole uh, extraction that you'd get in here. I'm just going to oh, try not to spill any grind. Level it out a little bit. I'm gonna use the tamper that they've supplied and give it a nice firm press. And there we go. So there is a little bit of extra grind that hangs around because it is that 58 mil tamper. So if you can, get a different tamper. I think it's a bit of a token gesture getting some of these, um, these tampers. Uh, they're never quite right. You've got your flare um, puck screen, which we're gonna pop on top as well. Pop that in. Now, as I said, we need to lift that handle just up a little bit. Lock it in, and then you can push it back down. Now the amount of water that we're gonna pop in here is pretty good, it's, it's just about right for us to do a two to one extraction. So we're gonna pour it in, this is pre-boiled 95 degree hot water, and as it goes in, you'll see that the element will actually hiss a little bit. There we go, so we know that that is nice and hot and ready to go. We're gonna pop under our cup. Now, this is where the control comes in. You can choose how much pressure that you're gonna to apply to your coffee bed. If you lift this up all the way and press it all the way down, you could provide nine bar or even more pressure onto your coffee puck. It's really up to you, you've got total flexibility. You can do a little pre-infusion by going up a little bit and then pressing down some water onto that coffee, or you could simply just go all the way up and then gently push down, maybe with three bar to start and then go up to nine. It's really up to you and you've got the control in the power of your hand. Um, the unit is super sturdy, so it is uh, quite easy to use. I don't feel like it's ever gonna tip over on me. Um, for this example, let's just lift it up and we'll see um, what kind of back pressure we get from the grind that I've set and I'm hoping we can get at around five bars to start and then we'll increase the pressure from there. So we're gonna lift it up and that's bringing the water past the top seal and it's gonna to start to sit on top of the coffee bed and you can see the water level starting to drop a little bit. And this is basically a pre-soak or pre-infusion, anything you wanna do, you've got that full flexibility. So I'm gonna now press down. I'm just gonna go nice and gentle to start. Here we go, and you can see the pressure just starting to build up. 
Now let's have a look what's happening down the extraction below there. There you go, that's nice and thick and juicy. That's sitting right on four bar at the moment. And I can increase that pressure again. Now I'm at five and I can go all the way up to nine bar right now. And I can finish it off with a nice gentle three bar at the very end. There you go. And it just diminishes down to zero pressure because the, the pressure you've created has to go somewhere. If you want to stop that pressure, just simply lift it back up and you can hear that little spurt happen. And now that coffee uh, hasn't got any more pressure applied to it. And look at that. That is pretty awesome espresso. Uh, a little smidge there of over extraction, mainly because I wasn't watching. Now, if we got our scale out and we could weigh this exact liquid, we would have got a perfect recipe. Um, so it's just full control totally to yourself. Now, again, you may love the nine bar, you might like the three. Hey, you have a play and you can work out what you like most about it. Now, when you go to take it out, um, I do like to just lift this up and I find getting another cup just to press any of that extra water through is the best way to, to manage the, the press. So I'm just gonna grab another cup now. So I'm just gonna pop that cup under there and just press through the balance of any liquid that might be in there. Because it's hard to get that out for the next extraction and if you don't get it out, it will essentially sit on top of your next brew. So just get rid of it there. There we go, it's all gone. Lifting it up then allows you to remove your handle and you can take your, your puck screen out and check out your puck. There you go. So no channeling. That's come through really nice. It's quite firm, quite even. And hey, I'm pretty happy with that as an espresso out of a manual press machine. So I've had my eye on the Flare 58 for some time. And the reason I've been looking at it for myself personally is I'm going to be traveling around Australia and I don't want to lug a really big machine around with me. And I think this is going to be a solution um, for me to have espresso no matter where we are in Central Australia or on the West Coast on a beach, uh, just being able to produce an amazing espresso. Now the key part about it that I, I find quite interesting is the power supply. Now it's a transformer which brings that power back to 24 volt, 96 watts at 4 amps. Now that might not mean much to you, but when you're caravanning and you've got um, a couple of batteries in there, which is basically 12 volt, I'll be able to convert that 12 volt to 24 volt and use this no matter where I am. I don't have to be plugged into power. I don't have to run a generator. I can simply run it from batteries. Now, I think that's pretty cool. Um, and I can pump out espressos really quick and have full control over my pressure profiling, which is something that I really enjoy doing um, because my home machine does have pressure profiling uh, and I don't really wanna miss out on that when we start to travel. So when it comes to build quality, the engineering's really amazing. I can't fault this. You know, um, the beautiful finishes, uh, there's been a couple of updates with the new arms. So I really like the fact that they changed that. The gauge is good. It's, it's pretty responsive, depending on how much pressure you've got to put on it. It really comes down to you being able to provide even um, pressure. And over time, you do start to get really uh, good at that. Um, it does come in a range of colors, which is great. Some whites, grays, and a couple of cool funky ones as well. And the fact that they give you a naked basket and a nice timber turned handle, which matches the timber on the press, it's just finished really well. Uh, the product's designed in the US. Uh, it does, it's actually made in China, um, which is fine. That's pretty much what happens with most things uh, these days. Um, so all round, for me, it ticks a lot of boxes. You know, I'd love to hear if you've got one of these or you've had a play, uh, whether you maybe had the previous models which didn't have the electric um, heating element, you know, what challenges you found, uh, whether you liked it, you know, would you upgrade to this perhaps model? Um, for me, electronic model straight away because having that heat consistency is just the key to making a great espresso. Um, I would swap out the basket there, probably pop in a, a VST for myself, getting up to my 22 and a half gram recipe with that VST 22 gram basket. Uh, I'd definitely be looking at doing some W bit DT and NCD uh, use onto that for puck prep. Uh, and then that does give you a much better 
um, extraction and it just looks gorgeous under that group handle. So uh, that's how I use it. So a couple of little, ex little extra, extra accessories uh, I'd advise you grab. Um, and look, realistically, it's for the black coffee drinker. It doesn't froth milk. So don't go out and get one of these if you're thinking uh, that you want to make a cappuccino or a latte because it's just not going to do it. So it's really about that uh, black coffee, uh, getting a beautiful single origin uh, and making a wonderful espresso no matter where you are. So I can't fault it. I love it. Uh, you know, if it's something you've got any questions about, hey, shoot me a question in the comments below. I'd love to answer that for you. Uh, if you're in Australia, they'll be on our online store. Um, happy to help you out with those. If you're local to us, hey, come in. Have a look, we're in the mid north coast of New South Wales, between Sydney and Brisbane, and we'll come in and we'll make you a coffee. So the big question, where does the Flare 58 sit in price? Well, the electronic model is more expensive than the non-electric, and it's around the $1,000 mark. The um, more travel style units, which don't have the electricity in them, uh, range between four to $600, and you can get a travel case as well. So you can get a, a smaller compact version if you want to chuck it in your luggage and take it with your traveling. So thanks very much for watching guys. I hope that's helped you understand a bit more about the Flare 58 and whether that is something that you would love in your home coffee collection. All right, cheers. We'll catch you next time. Bye.